Did someone say KFC? Good morning everyone, welcome to Thoroughbred Weekly. We all needed the extra hour of sleep this morning, mm -hmm. I can tell you. We went to Randwick yesterday, it was the meeting that was never ever going to go ahead. But somehow it did, and somehow when we arrived at the course at various times throughout the morning, we were bathed in sunshine. It was just surreal. It was too good to be true. And Ron Duffersey and Corey Brown were with me, and what we did get was 10 magnificent races. On a fair surface as yeah. well. So, unbelievable, didn't see it coming. A um, lot to be said about not hope, putting uh, water on the tracks, I can tell you that much, just the, yeah. let it happen when yeah. that happens and um, was fair, honestly. Uh, full credit to them. Um, an amazing job by, done by everyone concerned there. It's, mm. uh, just did not see that coming, considering the circumstances at six o'clock in the morning. Oh. It was mind blowing. Like yeah. what, what I'd seen that filtered through, like on social media and stuff, at six in the morning, the amount of water that was coming down, and to walk out on the track, say four hours after, yeah. and there wasn't a bead of water out there, and it, it, and like you said, Ronnie, how fair it raced. Uh, unbelievable. You know, mm. like they weren't getting into it. The times were. Soft track times yeah. on more than a couple of occasions. Um, you know, considering we'd have heavy tens that are running, you know, one fifteens mm. two years ago, yeah. and here they are running one twelve and one eleven. Yeah. Over two hundred mil. So let's let's show you how the day began. This is what we woke up to. Uh, social media posts put out by Peter Moody. These are stables at Randwick at around let's say five a.m because that's when they really got a heavy downpour. So those of you who are up early, looking at social media, you're just about to go back to bed. <laughs> you're just about to go back to bed. Uh, then a little bit later, the rain had eased and the trainers got out to the middle and here's Peter Moody talking to Michael Friedman. How are you going, Michael? Enjoying the going? Have you got a good thing for the punters today at Randwick, Michael? Yeah, book a lunch somewhere. <laughs> book a lunch somewhere. That's not very optimistic, Michael. A lot of cancelled lunches. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, but I know I cancelled mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so that's uh, so that's. That's what happened, and now this shot here. This is the real shot. This, yeah. is, this is the shot that tells you why we were not going ahead at around 6:30 a.m. This is the course proper, at around the thousand metre mark. It is covered in water. Now, even every, everyone said, "Well, this." I think the stewards, if they had to make a call at 6:30, if they were told you have to make a call at 6:30, mm -hmm. they would call it off. You can't race on something like that. No. no. Even, even, um, even the most optimistic people uh, couldn't imagine we'd, we'd get through it. 
So what happened was this dam uh, near the chute, that body of water there, it's not a dam, it's a catchment area. Yeah. That's where all the water flows through. It goes through Ramwick. It comes from yep. other, other suburbs and it flows through and it goes straight through Ramwick. Well, that dam overflowed onto that part of the course proper. That's the picture you just saw. So there were cockeyed op optimists out there yep. who, when they were told it was a million to one, they channeled Jim Carrey and, the, and they said, <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and there was a chance. So, so the, 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 the story is they delayed the decision until 7.45 when the stewards asked Michael Wood, will this water disappear? Mm. And he said it will. It'll take time, but it will disappear. And, yeah. and eventually, true to his word, it disappeared. Mm. And then... By the time they said we're right to race, there was no difference between no. other parts of the track and that part of the track that was at its worst. Yeah, well, they sent oh, two yeah. horses over it to give it a, like, obviously, to test it. And Stuart said that Andrew Atkins and that said no different to the top of the straight to over the yeah. thousand metres where it was lying over the track. So I'm hearing the, the, the early morning track gallop was cancelled, obviously, with that well yep. water on the track, and yep. they waited, and, yep. and that's what the extra hour. I don't know what happened in that hour, mm. but it certainly worked. And, mm. Mm. After and, and it, was, it was nothing that the track staff did on the morning. It, it goes to their foundation yeah. and the renovations that they do. Now, Michael Wood has put 5,000 tonnes on that track of sand over five years. Yeah. And a little bit of pain after the first bit of yeah. renovation. Yeah. Each time they renovate, there's a bit of pain there. Yeah. But that's, this is the outcome. Mm. This is the outcome when you get track renovations right. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Um, it, it, it was the beatification of Michael Wood yesterday. We're not calling for his sainthood just yet. He's not St Michael, <laughs> but he's getting close. Um, so we get to the races, and then the word goes around. Steve Ralton, the chairman of stewards, said, don't be surprised if there's a track upgrade. Well, that'll do me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can <laughs> say, look, we're going ahead, but don't give us this rubbish. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Corey Brown, I sent him out onto the track yeah. before the first. Go and walk the track. Mm. He said it felt like a soft track. Yep. And it raced like a soft track. Yep, race well. Yep. So there you go. That's what happened. And then we got to the races. Now we after we can that's after we cancelled lunch. After, after all lunches were cancelled. <laughs> and Ronnie had to get out of his PJs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, we, get, we get to the first and Espionage wins the first and we're underway. And uh, it, it, was, it was sunshine, it was hats, it was sunglasses and the umbrellas were tossed in the, in the rubbish bin. But let's go to later in the day and we go to uh, one of the highlights and there are many of them, but let's start with the Doncaster. And another crowning moment in the career of Lesbridge. His second Doncaster following on from years ago with Row of Waves to a horse he says is potentially the best horse he's ever trained. And a horse that at this point, Lesbridge says he gave up, he didn't think he could win. Mm. Uh, well, I don't blame him. Um, I would have thought it, it was just so cool, mm. you know, from a, a young man who belied his age here, you just, um, you could have easily panicked and got yourself into awful trouble and you'd know that yeah. Corey, but he just let the horse travel, he, he had confidence in the horse even though he hadn't, hadn't had a lot of experience on him, and here I thought, uh oh, uh oh, yeah. and then he had the enough in the tank to sort of make this run happen. Yeah. And it did. What happened, uh, Ronnie? I think no, not just win, winning the race, but his ride out of the barriers. He got a bit of a prat. He didn't jump uh, like great, but he could have been tempted to squeeze the horse because no, then sure. he had an opportunity to get up underneath him and get up, you know, maybe another three lengths, four lengths closer. But Tyler just let it unfold from the word get go, and then topping the straight, like you said, he had a wall of horses in front of him. Well, from the 400 to the 200, that was just so cool. Yeah, he could have snagged back and tried to just barge out somewhere Correct. and got himself into trouble. But and normally, normally, like a young jockey like that, under that sort of pressure, he'd gotten down to the 49 kilos. He could have been more than tempted to put the left hand blinker on and try and hook out and, you know, like create a run. But he just absolutely let it unfold. Like here, you can see, like he, he's. He's got an opportunity to give it a squeeze yep. and take up that slack, but he, he didn't. He just let it unfold, and then oh, I, I even thought when it, the thousand metre mark, I thought, oh, he's too far back on this horse, you know. Well, like he's back, a, just to point out where he is, he's back fourth last. Fourth last, yep. you know, like and like I said, even there in front of him, he's still got like another two lengths that he could have, you know, just rushed it 
and got up underneath him and you know maybe got him up on the bridle and got him travelling too fiercely but it was a really really cool ride. He just kept his he kept his own confidence yep. and the horse's confidence yep. uh, together there. So and just and just on that just on that keeping your cool mm. and maintaining your strength. Where, what sort of a line is it? I'm assuming it's a very, very fine line. Wasting to get down yep. to 49, but still having uh, your, your wits the, about the you, wits about you, yep. and, and, and the strength in your arms yep. and, and your body. Well, it was a bit of a bit of a program. Um, Tyler and I speak to each other every day. Um, he's obviously been on the diet for the last sort of three, nearly four weeks. But I spoke to his manager Hayden as well, and I said, going into a big day like this, riding 49 kilos, I said it's the last week preparation that you really need to concentrate on. I said, not too many rides through the week. I said, but you've still got to be ticking over. You've still got to have that race sense. So I said, I don't want him riding at the trials on Friday. And I said, on Saturday, I said, maximum of four rides. And it just goes to show, like young Tommy Sherry, who was riding, you yeah. know, extreme light, probably too light for, you know, where he should be riding, but. It just showed he went and competed in a really long race, and it just gutted him. So, so he got he got to that point, and he was he was healthy enough to ride, strong enough to ride. Yep. Looking at his face when you interviewed him, yep. He was gaunt. He was gaunt. Uh, there was there, there was no, there was no fat on him. Yep. And I bring this up because there were there were two jockeys who fell by the wayside on Saturday. Tom yep. Sherry was stood down because he wasted too hard. Yep. Uh, Ash Morgan yep. was stood down because he wasted too hard. I yep. think Regan Bayless was on Regan the precipice. Regan Bayless, he, he nearly put his foot over the line, yeah. So for this kid to do that, yep. it just goes to show you, you can go too far. You can go too far. And he, he done it the right way. Like he, he's obviously his diet, the way that he exercised leading into it. And it was like I said, it was a program that we sort of sat down and put in place. So he's, he's done a great job. And it's, it's good to see because more often than not, when you put yourself through those pain barriers, it doesn't pay off. But mm. yesterday was just a, a big big pat on the back, mate. Well done. Yeah. Well, he's got a fan for life now in Les, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah he has. And what a future he has with his attitude that he's got. Mm. You know, he's laid back. Like, yeah. Like a bit of a bowman he attitude. Is. He's very similar to Huey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. He's, uh, he's unique. Yeah. He's unique. There were great runs in the race. Um, talking about good rides, he nearly pinched it there. Shinny draw, outside draw, and he gave that horse Pericles an unbelievable um, run in transit there. So just beaten by the best horse. Militarised. Well, it'd be interesting to see him back up next week if he does. He'd bring the three-year-old angle into that, mm. that Queen Elizabeth. Nugget was well tried at big odds and very, very good. And hinged wide all the way. Oban Buramar held up, held up, held up from the 300 to the 100. Uh, Detonator Jack was good. There was good runs, but yeah. I just think the winner... He, he is a Cox Plate horse. Yep. Um, I know it's hard for four-year-olds in the Cox Plate, but he... He just looks a two thousand metre horse. I don't think he'd back. I don't. Wouldn't think he'd back up next week. It's but not Les's style, really, it's is not it? Not his style, but mm. and that's the other one, Les. What about Les? He's won everything, and yeah. he's he's uh, he he picked this horse early, and he doesn't go off early. And he said, "It's a good horse, you, you know. Yeah. He, he can win a Doncaster, and that's his second Doncaster. And um, Les has won everything: Slippers, Melbourne Cups, but." I think the Cox Plate might be on the he one wants that he to win wants. That. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, let's speak to Les. Here they are after the race. Les Bridge, uh, Tyler Schiller, and uh, plenty of insight from the jockeys who finished behind Celestial Legend when Chantel Buckley caught up with them at the scales. 39 years. Yep. Does this get sweeter? Oh, mate, this is some horse, believe me. It's some horse. I've had a lot of good horses, but this horse is unbelievable. When did you start to think he was in the race? The day I bought him. What about today in the run? When did you think he was going to... I didn't think to... he could win. I th just unbelievable. Yeah. Did I... you start to give up? I did. I thought he can't, he won't get out. And they just don't do that, do they? He's terrific, isn't he? Yeah, he's a superstar. So it was only late... Give me a kiss. I took her away on a holiday when she was a little kid. Is that right? Mandy Cotel, our AAP journalist. You've, you've been covered by a lot of journalists over your years, Les. <laughs> what do you think they'll be writing about you now? What, me obituary or what? <laughs> no, about you winning your second Doncaster. I don't know. It's up to you blokes. When did you start to think that you could realistically win? Was it really late, 50 metres out? I just love the horse. I felt the same as I did on Everest Day. You get horses like this, I thought I'd get one in a lifetime. I keep getting them. I can't work it out. 
Did you think he uh, had, he, had, had he improved since the round with Guineas? I knew he hadn't gone backwards. Right. I didn't want to give him another hard run because he had a terrible hard run in that mile. So I just give him a nice tick over trial. And Tyler Schiller's done it for you. Yeah, Tyler Schiller. Congratulations, Tyler. That must feel really well, mate. The last 200, I just wanted the post to come because I knew he was quickening. And Jesus, he's got a great turn of foot. He showed it in his track work when I rode him. And when I got him to the outside of Godolphin's horse, he, um, he just surged underneath me and I thought I was going to get there. It was just a matter of time, and um, with the lightweight, I was very glad I could make it because he's well and truly worth it. What were the thoughts when you strained for him and you had all the horses in front of you? Uh, I didn't think I was going to get out, to be honest. I just jammed him into a gap, and he was brave enough to take it. So I was very grateful for the owner's connections and um, Les on a great training performance for a horse to be that brave. Um, they're one in a million, and to do it at top level, he's, he's a bloody good colt. Pericles, Blake Shin. Look, he ran amazing to finish second, but beaten by the, you know, superstar three-year-old. Had a great run, uh, you know, very gallant second. Militarised, Zach Purton. Yeah, really good run. Um, come through like he was going to win. Um, just at the weights, a little bit tough for him, but very, very good run. Nugget, Declan Bates. Yeah, he's run super. Bit of shame we didn't grab at least top three, but look, he wouldn't might have deserved that, but uh, super run, super. Craig Williams, hinged. Yeah, hinged ran really well. We've had no favours throughout the run. Neither Jack, Tim Clark. Yeah, he ran really honestly. Had a nice run back on the inside and um, kept working to the line. Jamie Carter, another will. Yeah, he ran well, just did way too much work, um, but he'd be right for another race. Democracy Manifest, Joe Ford. Yeah, he ran a great race. Probably just needed a bit more room earlier. Kovalika, Tommy. He's just lost a bit of that zip now, might be looking for further. Rustic Still Regan. He ran a really good race. Think about it, Sam. Oh, he ran really well. He tried hard. Um, I just don't think he ran the mile at top weight with um, on a. On a on a, a heavy surface, albeit a good surface, but a, still a testing surface. Dylan Gibbons, Lock Eagle. Yeah, very good run. He's just racing like he wants 2,000 now. Hey, Bam Buremeyer, Damien Lane. Just didn't get the rub of the green on straightening and um, just didn't give him enough, get enough space to let him fully accelerate. And then once I did get room, um, the race had passed me by. Andy Atkins, Barkshire Shadow. Yeah, terrific run. Um, beautiful cart during the race. Just a bit unlucky late there, um, but he's so, certainly... Gives you a good feel. He's a nice horse. Lindemann, Zach Lloyd. Yeah, he tried hard. Um, obviously, the barrier was, was always going to determine how wide we went up the straights, and I do think that's probably a bit, bit heavy for him, but he was honest. Palmetto, Molly Burke. Yeah, ran a super race. He'll definitely improve. Thank you. Lady Laguna, Mick D. Uh, come to the end of her prep. Ronnie Stewart, Pearson. Uh, just on the awkward alley, we just got a few little tricks. I was hoping to get there a little bit softer. I knew they would make me work early in the first furlong. I thought once they sort of get their positions, they'd let us go. But got a few little tricks. And probably once I got to the rail, I tried to give and take a bit. But he, he, he run. OK. Um, so the KFC business, <laughs> this, this KFC, it, it was written in the paper during the week that he, he Tyler Schiller, he gave up KFC oh, to, okay. to get down to the weight. And um, that's... That's why there's so much talk about KFC. Okay. So we asked him after the interview, the, are you having KFC tonight? He said, no, I'm having what Mr Ho's having. Yeah, <laughs> that was a very, very good answer. It was, and it was think, quick too. It might have been the live lobster out of the shank. Yeah, it could have been anything. Or it could have been one of those beautiful mud crabs with some black pepper or white oh, pepper. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> you did miss lunch yesterday, didn't you? Here we go, to the derby. Chris Waller only had two Sydney Group 1s uh, off the resume. Uh, Canterbury Stakes and the Derby. He was yet to win either. Yesterday he ticked off the Derby. Canterbury Stakes to go. Riff Rocket beats Chao Wolf in one of the great Derby finishes. It was, and you know, I don't want to take. I didn't want to take the shine off Tyler, but I yes. tell you what, <laughs> this was just class personified. Yeah, this uh, is this is why he's number one. This when you. Look at a race like this, and you save four lengths on the point of the turn, just yep. through your, your brain thinking. Yep. And and it, it, it's them horses, Ronnie, like they, they'd stay as they need room to wind up, and they ride really loose on the point of the home turn. Chow Wolf had to come round, and it just, he just picked the eyes out of it. He sat back, travelled, allowed them to open up, because they have to give these horses room to get, get mobile and get rolling. But it, we, like they said, they got J-Mac yesterday. Yeah, they did. They <laughs> did, yeah. Uh, no doubt about it. And Chin hasn't made a mistake in no. six months. <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing everything right. And I'm not saying he did anything wrong no, there because no, no. he, he didn't lose momentum, but 
he just, when you just see the ground that he saves by ducking back, where Chad Wolf had done no work, and he says, OK, I'm going to keep you out of trouble. Yeah. Ollie's <laughs> wide, no problem. There's, there's not much difference in this track. but And then you know, McDonald just goes, OK, I'll just save four or five lengths here, yeah. and um, I'm going to come through, and I'm off and gone. So... Um, Really good horse, the winner. He's a really good horse. Cheerwolf's a good, nice stayer in the making. What do you want to say about the rest? Glad you think so was I thought, he was, gonna, I thought he was going to steal it there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom Kitten, no excuses. But um, look, you can't. it's very hard to win three group ones, and this horse it's, has done that in two derbies. And the second horse's turn will come. Uh, Debbie Capetus bred Riff Rocket. Races in her Whoppet Bloodstock colours. She uh, raced the uh, the mother, Missile Coda, uh, sent her to American Pharaoh, and the product is a horse that uh, becomes only the fourth horse in history to do mm. the, the VRC Australian Derby Double, which we'll bring up in the interview post-race. But she's had uh, probably many sleepless nights this week in the build-up to the sale of Winx. Yeah. Uh, foal, the Piero Winx Foal. She would have been hardly getting 40 winks uh, during the week. She'd be getting more like two or three winks. Uh, let's go. I, 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 I spoke to Debbie uh, first of all. as She welcomed uh, Riff Rocket back to scale, and then we're joined by Chris. James just said more money for the winks filly to buy her back. Oh, look. No, She's got to come an, home, James. There's an, there's an, it's an oxen. But this is absolutely fabulous. This horse, to do what he did today, he was slipping and sliding. He jumped out and he slid as he jumped out. And then you could see him over the back slipping as he's trying to come through. He doesn't give in. He's got a heart like Winx. Have you heard of Dulcify and Mahogany and Hitotsu? Your horse becomes the fourth horse in history to complete the double and with those famous names. I know, and that Cerise didn't. <laughs> no, look, that's very important. History is what, what you go for. It's all written there. And to see him do this is just unbelievable. We just didn't know that we had an animal like that. And this genius man here, without him, I don't know what we'd be up to. <laughs> well, guess what, Deb? Your horse has just given this man his first Australian derby. I One know. of two races that have eluded you. You've, you've, you've won a Victoria derby and you've done it a couple of times now, but your hometown derby. Pretty special. Yeah, simple as that. And these guys were here before I had the first group one winner, so... Yeah, it's, it's fitting, you know, as you can tell. Yeah, it I'm not, be, I don't cry as much as I used to, but this <laughs> one's pretty special. But it should be special. Yeah, it is, yeah. Racing special, just racing today. Um, five o'clock this morning didn't look good, did it? Not at all. Mm. You're going to have to wait a week for to win so, a derby. Yeah. <laughs> so the team at Randwick have done an amazing job. James has done a great job, and my team, they were there in the pouring rain the last few days. Do a great job. You think he's a stayer now? You were still umming yeah. and ahhing whether you'd run a mile and a half. He's, with good rides like that, it's a big help. How tough is this horse? Oh, you'd love him with war. He's, um, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's, just, he's as solid as a rock. He doesn't know how to run badly. He's, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to say he, uh, he's just got a fantastic will to win, but he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Were you ever concerned? I was at the, at the 300 because... He, he didn't spend a penny getting there, but I could feel he was out on his feet. Like, this is, the distance range is as far as he wants. So, um, the will to win, tenacity to find a line is incredible. Great training effort. You know, Victoria Derby, now Sydney Derby. But he does it all the time, doesn't he? He's a master. But, um, yeah, it's good, good to be riding for him. Well done, <laughs> Thanks. Blake Shin, Chayworth. Uh, look, he was brave. He, he ran an amazing race. Uh, when I got the brakes up the, the middle, we had to come wide. Great race. Uh, yeah, he could turn the tables down the track. Yeah, he's an exciting talent. Glad you think so, Rachel King. Uh, yeah, massive run. Look, he loved getting out in front and bowling along. Further the better. Tom Kitten, Nash, uh, Adam Hieronymus. Yeah, no, he's just very strong over the 2400 today, so a combination of that and the heavy track took its toll. Immediacy, Luke Curry. Yeah, run well. Look, he just got caught a bit deep early. Um, once he got over, he was good, but came off the bridle early um, and then stuck on well late. Cat for a Nasharilla. Yeah, look, he's a beautiful horse. Um, I thought the the trip on that 
testing conditions today found him out a little bit, but, um, you know, I could see him staying that trip later on, you know, he's a nice horse. Why Mark Tommy Berry? Very proud of him. He's had a really good long prep and he's been some, by some pretty seasoned campaigners there. Noisy boy, Jay Ford. Uh, first time seen a wet track and he failed to handle the conditions. Gun Barry, Tim Club. Yeah, he struggled a bit today with the conditions and the 2400. Regan Bayless, Adagio. Probably a little bit outclass and just going to need a spell now and come back a nice little stayer. Zen Master, Chad Schofield. Uh, he struggled. Jason Collett, Hooligan, Tommy. Over raced, didn't finish it off. OK, so that uh, is the wrap-up for the derby. And for the record, Chris Wallop goes to 160. Group 1 victories in his career. And once again, he and Gay are level. Gay Waterhouse has trained 160 Group 1 winners, 26 of which have been with Adrian, but 160 in her own right. And McDonald just edging ever so close to Corey to that 100. Yep. Uh, he's riding one a week at the moment. Going to get there quicker than he thinks, I reckon. 93 Group 1 victories for McDonald. I'm going to take a break. Two more Group 1s to come here on Thoroughbred Weekly. Just before we get to the TJ Smith, here's a bit of footage uh, when Corey Brown heard the announcement the races were going ahead. <laughs> he was that excited. Uh, he'd been practising all week with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to master it, Ronnie, let me tell you. And not bad with a bad back either. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's go to the TJ. Uh, Peter Moody probably thought he could win the TJ, but it was with I Wish I Win. This uh, caused a shock. Chain of Lightning was able to uh, defeat some big names here, including Bella Nepotina, I Wish I Win, and the champion Kiwi Mare Imperatrice. Yeah, it's amazing. She hadn't won in a while before, a couple of weeks ago, where she actually she was quite dominant winning that race with uh, a big weight but that was you know only a little well would not wait to say a little group three but that was only a group three and here we are at the top level here at Wait for Age and she was excellent. Fit Mare, found a form, in the zone, found plenty when they loomed to her so it's a, a real feather in a cap. Seven horses covering a length there yeah. so does that make us worried? Uh, is it a good even bunch? Look at Espiona behind there, held up, held up, held up. But that's how you're going to ride her to ambush late. So could have been a touch unlucky. Bella de Patina was great. What do we want to keep saying here? She's come to the end of the uh, preparation in Peritriz, maybe. Uh, but I, she's probably, I still think she's better on the dry. She's had a magnificent preparation. The biggest improver of the race. I made a couple of mistakes tipping horses first up there yesterday. You can't do that mm. on heavy tracks. I think he's the biggest improver yeah. in the top weight. I wish or, I win. Uh, not, I won't say the top weight, but <laughs> yeah. I wish I win. Yeah. He's the, the big improver for mine. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll tell you, uh, Willinga Beast, way out of his sort of class. He's only won one race, 14 starts. But I think he's a horse to follow, Ronnie. Honestly, I thought he'd run really, really well. Well, you get a chance to back her in the provincial championships <laughs> next week, <laughs> if you like. Um, uh, the, uh, the flashing light there, wait for age group one, we've yeah. seen it all before. Yeah. And uh, she's, uh, she's got a stable mate there that uh, might have something to say, but or two, a stable mate or two. Here's an exercise for someone to do. Go and find the most remote place a group one winner has, come from. has uh, debuted at. Mm -hmm. Chain of Lightning won its maiden at its first start at Inverell. Oh, I thought it was went, Maury, but it was, yeah. Inverell, yeah, Inverell, yeah. trained by Sterling Oslin. Uh, then went to Armadale on its then home track, second start, won again, and then they sent the mayor to Peter Moody. So Inverell <laughs> to Randwick. Incredible. Yeah. And she's had a, a great career. Like She's a, a real homebred there mm. when you look at her pedigree. And... Um, they identified her with talent early, and, mm. and uh, the rest is history now. Uh, not hard to get a tear out of uh, Stewie oh. Ramsey. Uh, Stewie and Trish Ramsey uh, very excited after the win, and uh, they go back a long way, as you see here, Peter Moody and Stuart, and here they are for the race. I knew there'd be a tear. Oh, well, I can't help it. <laughs> it's fairly satisfying. <laughs> Good on you, Corey. When you, you breed the father, the mother, and her. It's the whole lot. It took me 20 years, yeah. 
It's wonderful. And you've won a big one at Randwick, one yeah, of the biggest for TJ. <laughs> I've never had a lot of luck at Randwick, but we did today. How many group ones for you in oh, those colours? I don't know. In those colours, I think about five or six that we've raced ourselves, but we've bred quite a few, including the champ April. And what about your old mate here? <laughs> yeah, well, we've had a lot of luck. Yeah. <laughs> Decent person, too. <laughs> I knew he'd be emotional. <laughs> oh, listen, it's hard not to be. Stuart and Trish are foundation clients since the day Sarah and I first kicked off. And uh, to be able to win this race on such a special day. And, uh, you know, we thought we might have been out of our depth class-wise. But uh, she, I think she shocked us a little bit with her courage and her determination. A beautiful ride by Damien. And, uh, you know, she, it's, it's a first preparation in a few where she's run into a couple of wet tracks. She's won a group two and a group one, and uh, she just loves getting that toe into the ground. Well, you've won four TJs now. I think this is the biggest surprise. Yeah, no, they've, they've all been special, and uh, he was my first boss, and he was one of my first clients, so uh, special to win that race. And, Kath, and Catherine gets a group one. It's very special for Catherine. Congratulations to her, her first group one uh, as a trainer, and uh, very special. And we've got Jeff being You're part of the team there behind us, and uh, Sarah and the girls at home, you know, it's uh, it's a big team effort, our He's crew, and uh, no, it's good. Yeah, everyone seems very, very happy. And what about the uh, the third uh, horse, uh, the other one of yours? I wish I win. I thought he ran super. He probably just peaked on his run the last 50 metres. I thought he was going to win it. Thank and Christ, uh, he did. And first up, uh, <laughs> first up uh, off that long break, I thought he was super. Hang on, what'd you it's say? Me, thank Christ he did knock up. It's <laughs> taken me 30 years to get on top of Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do. All right, here's Damien Lane. Congratulations, Damien. She became the forgotten horse with all the big names in the race. Yeah, uh, and she came in with some really strong form, peaking at the right time, uh, confident she'd handle the ground. So she ticked a lot of boxes. Of course, you're never too confident when you come up against a field like this, but she acquitted herself really well. Did you always feel the winner? I did, actually. I, I just thought that maybe I pressed the button a touch early because I hit the Alex accelerator coming up the rise and sometimes that's a touch too early here but she gritted her teeth and uh, knuckled down and did, did enough which was um, yeah made it good. Made it um, what is it? Thank you. Craig Williams, Bella Nipatina. Yeah so proud of my mare's performance today she was amazing loved the ground condition and fought all the way to the wire. James McDonald I wish I win. He was massive he um, ran out of his skin. Imperatriz Opie Bosson. Yeah, she just got held up momentarily for a couple of strides but um, she ran through the line well. Sunshine in Paris, Jason? Yeah, really happy uh, with the run. Um, yeah, finished it off good. Nash, Espiona? Yeah, wonderful run. Yeah, look, uh, just got it tied up in the iron there, strung up there for 100 yards, and uh, look, she, she lengthened and finished off better than anything, so it was a great run. Magic time, Mick D? Uh, another great effort. Um, unfortunately, stuck down towards the inside, but 1400 third up will be right up her alley. Marks are uh, Johnny Rocker. Yeah, look, he ran well. He didn't disgrace himself. Probably better on top of the ground, but yeah, good effort. Ben Mellon, not bonus matches? Ran well. He had to give a start away from the draw, and I'll be interested to see him at 1,400. Willinga B, still in Gibbons? She's got enormous. It's a great run leading a provincial race next week. <laughs> Tim Clark, Mazu? Yeah, he, he raced a bit keenly early, um, but he was a beaten horse on the turn. Zach Purton, half cabin? Just couldn't quite get the right run. Stuck out there a bit, facing the breeze. Exposed. Got there too soon. Taylor Schiller, Cole Crusher? Yeah, he's just lacked his early speed. Um, his last couple of runs, he might just be ready for a, a break. OK, now let's go to the uh, English Sires. Uh, second leg of the Triple Crown. The morning of the race, uh, scratching of Lady of Camelot. She's OK. She's heading towards the Percy Sykes next Saturday. But because of the heavy track, they withdrew Lady of Camelot. Now, this was supposed to be the year of the cults. <laughs> the, yes. big, the big multi-million dollar cults. They were going to win everything. And they had been, in the lead up to all these races, they were going to win all the grand finals. Philly wins the Blue Diamond. Philly wins the Slipper. Philly wins the Size. Yeah. You would not have thought of that three three or four weeks. Well, just before the Blue Diamond, anyway. No, no. Put it that way. We were saying, this is the year of the Colts. This is the one. They're going to dominate. Yep. And these little fillies, they're getting these little weights. Of, it's not just the weight advantage, but there's, there is a question whether they should be getting yeah. it in the modern day. <laughs> Uh, but they used keep... to get more, didn't they? They may have got more in the old days, but look, that's now we haven't got steroids and all this sort of stuff. To keep... These horses are pretty well level playing field, I think. And uh, anyway, we're not going to mess with that. But she was great. Yeah. Uh, this has been a target race for her all along. Um, she hasn't done anything wrong. Um, she wins a gym crack. She wins a sweet embrace. She wins. She was fantastic in a slipper, and here she is in a size. Unfortunately. 
traffic warden loomed up there and he bled from both nostrils, I didn't realise. So whether that's happened after the race or in the race, I don't know. So he's out for three months and look, he's done a really, really good job, this Coleman. There was only one little blot on his copy book there when he started favouring the Blue Diamond. I don't know what happened there, but all his other runs are great and he's been so tough and Matt Laurie's done a great job with him. Yeah, I reckon he's ne next preparation, Ronnie, in the enclosure yesterday, he looked a different horse yeah. to even what he did in the slippery. He's really trained on well and I honestly reckon that he could be something special next yeah. preparation. I thought he was something special at his first couple of runs and then I sort of got put off a little bit, but I think he is good. Um, what are we going to say about this Storm Boy? Um, well, you can't give horses signals like the Ryan Moore give him that big signal and rode him hard out of the barriers. You can't give young horses signals like that and expect them to then come back underneath you. Like even the next start as it did there yesterday, James was trying to get in cover, even though it was three wide in behind Prost. He just would not settle. I know he stepped up at an extra furlong in distance to the 1400, but he's, he's just wanting to race now. I think for him, preparation over, start again next time. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to kick him. I'm not going to kick him until I see him again next prep on a drier track. That's his first yeah, heavy run. Yeah. You know, these was some might and handle it. So yeah. uh, jury's out, but I'm not putting the boot into him. Let's go and hear from uh, Michael Freeman. It's amazing to think that we started the day watching Michael Friedman and Peter Moody play in puddles yeah. on the inside of that yeah. Randwick course. Yeah. Now they're playing ring a ring a road. <laughs> <laughs> Neither thought the races were going to go on, and here they are, both training Group One winners on the day. Here's Michael. Describe this filly for me. Oh, she's she's outstanding. You know, I mean, she's she's won the Jim Crack back in the spring. Um, I thought a run in the Widden at the end of January giving uh, Lady of Camelot three kilos on a, on a sort of leaderish track was terrific. She won the sweet embrace, she was a bit stiff in the slipper and she's won the size so um, you know I'm, I'm full of praise for her and it's great to have a, such a, a really good filly for it. Emirates and Hussein Luttar that, that own half the stadium and he's an exciting stallion and hopefully we can get a few more of them through. How did you feel after the slipper? Having been beaten did you walk away excited for the future? No, I wouldn't say excited for the future. I was a bit despondent of um, what might have been. Um, I, ju I just have so much faith in this filly, right from the word go. Like We were doing work with her early in the spring and she was showing those signs that you like to see of a good early two-year-old. Um, and just her ability to, to, to relax in races and finish them off like she does is such a big attribute. It was brilliant today. What about a mile? Oh, look, I think she'll run a mile, um, whether that's in the Champagne in two weeks or, or we wait and have a look in the spring. I think we'll just let the dust settle before we make any of those decisions. But um, I think she's got the versatility to, to, to run up over a mile because, as I said, she's just got such a beautiful, relaxed demeanour and gives herself a chance to finish races off. Do you love training young horses? Yeah, I don't mind the older ones either. Um, but, yeah, I do get a bit of a buzz out of the young ones. It's, it's something that, I guess, since I've come back from Asia, I've... I've focused a little more on but um but yeah it's uh i don't know it, it's just a it's a big thrill well a slipper and a size not bad yeah can't complain well done. thank you mate. congratulations jace i know that this horse means a lot to you yeah i was, I was fortunate uh, fortunate enough to pick her up in the slipper and although she didn't win it it felt like a win i, I come back in and i could see the excitement in michael's eyes and the team just you know she had an awful gait so we went in today with confidence. Her work on Tuesday was the same as uh, before going into the slipper. Again, she drew wide, but she was able to overcome it. The wheels spun a little bit at the top of the straight? They did. They they went early, then they pulled up through the middle. I was sort of trying to hold Coleman in, but he's a big horse and I'm not, so he got out. <laughs> uh, and I just sort of then had to give her time, rebalance, and then I, I thought I might only had Coleman, Coleman to beat, but Traffic Warden was still there. But luckily we got our nose down. It's really special when you've got the family to enjoy it with you. It is, yeah. They didn't think they were coming today, but then Claire came home from uh, sports with the little one and said, we're going to the races. So, yeah, this is awesome. Right well on, buddy. Thank you. Jamie Carr, Traffic Warden. Yeah, super run, so close. He's just improving every time I ride him. Damien Lane, Common. He ran super. I was just beaten for speed early and had to 
make up too much ground in the running. He sprinted well, but the run just ended at 100. James McDonald Stormboy. He did a good job. He was trapped deep. He just refused to settle there for a bit and finished off well. Frost, Adam Hieronymus. Uh, yeah, just flat out the whole way on the track, so he'll come back next prep as a nice three year old. Tommy Berry, fearless. Just a bit uncomfortable in, in amongst horses today, went a bit keen and he was still on us, but that took away his finish. Tim Clark, an ode. He tried hard, but he just um, just found a few a bit stronger than him. Juvana? Just travelled a bit strong through the mid stages, and then when they quickened, he was flat footed. Rachel King and Vianara? I jumped and travelled really well today. They're just a bit sharp for him. He's going to be a nice three year old. All right, so this is what happened in the morning. Here's uh, Moody and Friedman. Playing in puddles. <laughs> oh. Take your shoes off like me. <laughs> Two trainers together. Wonder what they were saying about Michael you Wood. Michael? Yeah. Yeah. You're mad. <laughs> You're crazy. If you think this meeting's going ahead, you've got rocks in your head. <laughs> You're kidding yourself. Yeah. Bro. Let's book lunch. <laughs> no, instead, what we'll do, we'll go to the race and win two grip ones. <laughs> exactly. There's been big prize winners win the country championship in the past. Freestanding was the first of them. Uh, Gracie Bell was 20 to 1. Sizzle Manizzle last year was 60 to 1. Here's another long prize winner as Garda winning the country championships. And the biggest win in the careers of trainer Doug Gorrell, former newspaper man turned trainer, and Kayla Nisbet. What a story and what a great moment. Uh, for all concerned. Look at the position she had her in. Yeah. Um, just absolutely perfect. I, I didn't know much about her. I must say, I did comment on her in the yard. I thought, wow, this is as good as anything I've seen in the yep. yard here in this race. And she um, was outstanding. She's lightly raced. Um, she's only, this is only a 12th start, five wins, four placings. How did we miss this? <laughs> How did we miss this? She was, was just... a, she, was a, she was electric when, when uh, Kayla let her go. She certainly was, and obviously she likes it wet, there's no doubt about it. Gallant Star was set up beautifully and just didn't, it just ran into the wrong horse there. Have a look at Rapidash here, red sleeves back in the field, white, red sleeves, red hat. Um, just was about to explode and just hits a hurdle. Yep. Beaten, beaten a fair way and just has to keep switching course. And when balanced and gets one little the uh, little tap with a persuader here, I just, it just makes you think what might have happened there. She looked a bit unlucky to me. And would you believe Bandy's boy, I don't think he backed up, but he did pull up two out of five lane, which is unfortunate. But he was very flat there on Saturday. He didn't run to form, but what a result. What a smiling face from Kayla. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> it she's, makes you feel good. Which it yeah. does. She gets that from her father. I remember Johnny yeah, years, but he was sure. always yeah. smiling. Even when he was angry, he was smiling. But um, there was only one thing that would have been more fitting in that race there yesterday is if Kayla's brother-in-law had a run second to her. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But she can boast that he finished further back. That's he right. could only manage third. Uh, so... Um, yeah, so Doug Gorrell, uh, former sports editor in Townsville and Canberra, uh, did a few things in between, but then turned his uh, hand to training horses. And here he is uh, after the race, and then we got some of the Nisbet family there, and then you'll hear what the jockeys had to say of the Beaten Brigade. Doug Gorrell, congratulations. A million-dollar race at Royal Ramwick. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, wow. I just can't believe it, mate. <laughs> Real big thrill, real big thrill, you know, we, the stable staff and the owners and my family are just the nicest people, they're all here, we got, we got, I don't know how many, how many owners tickets we were allowed to have, but we, we've got ten times more than we should. You've got them all in. They're all here, they're all here and, mate, I can't believe it, you know, we, we didn't, we couldn't have her any better, but you still, you know, that Bandy's boy won a group three last sad day, you think, geez, he, he should panel them. There's half a dozen other horses in front of the market. So as, as confident as we were, we had the horse under Nizzy. You know, I didn't expect to win. 
I didn't expect to win. Did, you, thought, go, did you go away from Albury happy uh, with what she did there? Yeah, yeah, both runs at Albury were super. You know, if she didn't um, bit, suffer a bit of interference in that last run, I reckon she goes close to winning. She certainly runs second, not third. She, she uh, marked herself a little bit, but it was never a problem. Her last two gallops, uh, the Saturday and the Tuesday leading in this were the best two gallops in two years. Um, my my um, main rider, Anel Gangatina, ex-picnic jockey, she said, Doug, we've got this horse cherry ripe, and she was spot on. She was spot on. What about Kayla Nisbet? Yeah, she's pretty good, isn't she? Hey, hey Niz. <laughs> She's pretty good. The entire Nish family too. Yeah, yeah well, I just said to Peter, her mum, her lovely mum, I said, well, I'm in the Nisbet family now. Hey, I expect Christmas that? every year. <laughs> yeah. well, just pan around here. Shani's sister, mum Peter, yes. sister Riley, all enjoying this. Before we... Doug's daughter. Yeah, yeah, my daughter. Your daughter. Like Shani's, Shani's uh, now married to the second best jockey in the Nisbet family. <laughs> that tea berry. Yeah, we'll, we'll have tea Nisbet every day. Well... Here she is, the lady of the Kayla. moment. What a moment for you. A huge thrill. Um, I was just saying, we say time and time again, what a great initiative this has been for country participants. But um, to be able to win it is a huge thrill. It's given all country participants an achievable goal to strive for. And to be able to win it is very exciting. Take us through the race, because she was dominant late. She was. Um, she, look, she's so easy to ride. She really helps herself. She always bounces well and puts herself up on the speed. Her last couple of runs, I've probably I've probably ridden a, a bit out of her comfort zone just because I've been in a little bit ordinary fields and I haven't been able, I haven't wanted to, sorry, get in behind too many of them. So today with good speed and a good draw, I knew we were going to get a nice um, run in behind them and she just showed an electric turn of foot. Congratulations, go and enjoy it. Thanks, Corey. Ta. Gallant star, Sam. Yeah, really proud of him. He, um, he's run out of his skin, enjoyed a nice run with cover, um, let down really well, just credit to the winner because it really zipped for the 300 but my fellow was pegging it back but just beating better by a better horse in the day but uh, he's gone terrific my horse. Tommy Rapidash? Um, yeah he uh, uh, was uh, she was unlucky. Like she and Rainbow Connection? Uh, look he ran a great race he ran fourth uh, every chance good effort. Um, Belenko Viano? I thought under the circumstances of the race where he was I thought he's ran really solid but just at the top of the straight I was following Nash and just wasn't able to stay on his back so he didn't have that acceleration I was known he's had in the past today. Tribeca star Nash? Yeah look he didn't quite really see the trip out. Um, he felt the winner at one stage just didn't quite set out. Atmospheric rock Jason? Probably found the 14 a bit, a bit far. Associate Zach Lloyd? Uh, yeah a bit disappointing. I was um, expecting a better run. He uh, just felt to me he may have resented the track a bit. And his boy, Jay Ford? Yeah, look, he's far better than that. Um, I just think he's come to the end of things. He uh, he was abnormally very quiet today, and that sort of showed in the run. Oster? Yeah, I thought he ran well. Probably has to touch out of his grade today. Listen to the band, Jake. Not one of my best. He's got four deep, stuck four deep. Let's hope with his efforts. Rhys Jones, sharp shock. Uh, got cut out down straight, just got pinballed away, and that was him. Musical affair, Rachel? Uh, showed that really good speed, but... Got a bit bogged down on the track. Scotty's had no luck. Jenny, a girl's best friend? Um, we had a beautiful run in transit following the favourite, but she's feeling something somewhere, so she didn't block the best. Rightio, that's uh, all the jocks there from the country championships. Runners up, gallant star Brett Robbie. Won it last year with Sizzle Manizzle. He has to settle up for second this year. The horse uh, part owned by David Ringland and former Test cricketer Kerry O'Keefe. Yeah, look, um, it was a bit nerve-wracking, but um, look, really happy with the horse. He went really good. Um, yeah, not sure where we're going to go now with him. I was just talking to Sam whether we spell him and bring him back for the Cosi Oscar or we, we, we push on. He's probably looking for a mile now, um, whether we push on and, and try and win a, a big dance race or something like that. He loomed up. I don't know how serious you thought he was a chance at that stage. Continues the good form lines out of the Canamble race. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, look, he, I think his last 100 was his best, you know. I think he was, he was taking ground off it in the end. So, yeah, look, really happy happy with the, the horse. And, um, yeah, it's been a really fun weekend. You've got your co-owners here, Dave, David Ringland and Kerry O'Keefe. How was that, Kerry? Oh, it was so exciting. What a great ride. The Joseph O'Brien of New South Wales country <laughs> and a, a great co-owner and a horse that tries his heart out. It's a, the New Haven Park country has just given me such a, a lift, mate. What an outstanding concept. We've finished second, but we feel we've won. 
which almost got as much money as him too. <laughs> no, it's been a hell of a ride, and to do with two good blokes is just an added bonus, mate. David, you had to miss the qualifier. You were overseas, came back for the final. So close. It was, and uh, it's, I'm sort of half happy that I missed the qualifier when we uh, had all of that issues to get in here, but getting here has been fantastic, eh? And uh, such a thrill to cheer your horse down the straight at Randwick. This won't be the last horse you two own together, will it? Oh, no. Uh, no we may it's, even it's ongoing. Have, we may even have another one. <laughs> yeah. We're just having so much fun. And to have a, a Randwick horse with a live chance in a big million-dollar race, it's a dream of everybody that buys into a horse, and we've, we've done it. Great publicity for you again, Brett, as it was last year. Hopefully it'll mean even more clients coming your way. Oh, hopefully. Have to get, some, um, get David to build me some more boxes. He, um, he was horrified, Brett, well, Rob, when they paid 32000 for Gallon <laughs> Star and they went to sixty for his brother. Oh, 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 I think they can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> Pritchard was sent in with one job, make him laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one job, and he, uh, mission accomplished. Um, let's go to a break. Uh, overriding, well done, winning the Musselbrook Cup yesterday, a transferred Musselbrook Cup from, uh, from its home place to... Newcastle, which was the venue for the transferred Hawkesbury meeting, if that makes sense. We'll be back after this. Oh, that's very funny. Um, here we go. We're up to uh, race number one. We're going to go right back to the start. To the start of the day that never was going to happen. And Espionage, the horse that won the Breeders' Plate and remarkably couldn't get into the Golden Slipper. First and only emergency for that race. This was plan B. Uh, but a kindergarten stakes is nothing to be sneezed at. Yeah, it's a nice little finish to the prep though. Um, yeah. Just to give him that bit of confidence. I think he's a good colt. Um, he just looked all bone and muscle. He just yeah. may have just come to the end of it. I think. I reckon he had it up. in the in the yard. He looked. Uh, uh, well, I think he did yeah. a lot lighter than what he had yeah. in his previous runs. Um, but he, I think it was class from the hundred metres onwards. It was just all class. Pulled him away from the rest of the field. But I think he's got a bright future. I reckon when he comes back, he's going to put on 30, 20 yeah. kilos for sure. Yep. Yeah. And um, he just, he, he just, he was just mentally beyond the barrier. And even Tommy said the same thing. And I just convinced he, he could be the Coolmore horse. This fellow down mm -hmm. the straight um, in the spring, um, second horse. Look, he's just still learning. He's just all, yeah. all runs on fear. He was another one. He done a lot wrong yesterday. Yeah. Where yeah, he was, his previous win, he just done everything right. But yesterday was just, yeah, I think he might be coming to the end of the road as well. Yeah. He, he's the sort of horse why James Harron bought a slot in the Everest. Yeah. To run one of their own. Yeah, yeah well. And, and, you know, in the likes of Capitalist. And yeah. To try and find another uh, superstar sprinter where they don't have to go and do deals. Yeah. They can pick one of their own. That, that would be the dream. Well, that would be, he would get a good opportunity in his early three-year-old mm. races and we'll get a good look at him. Because he's, he's a good little type for it if he, if he, if he continues on that up, upward spiral. And, and it's the, the times are we haven't got a superstar standout champion sprinter. Well, harking back to what you said about the TJ yesterday, it was a bunch finish. Magic, mm. magic, not, uh, magic uh, time finished a length behind the winner and she ran what? Seventh, seventh or eighth? Yeah. Yep, yep. So that's the times we're living in. Mm. And um, the dream's alive for everyone. Mm. Uh, here is uh, Adrian Bott and Tommy Berry. Obviously, uh, the timing didn't work for him with the with the Golden Slipper, and um, yeah, this is a nice consolation for him just to showcase his class today. Um, you know, I think obviously on the testing track, it may not have been his ideal conditions, but having that having that horse with the fitness and, and the foundation there, I think that certainly helped. He's learning too. He was a bit field shy the other day, but then when Rosalind Star was coming in on him. He, he straightened up and concentrated. Yeah, look, Tommy was able to position him perfectly today. He was able to sort of keep him in a nice rhythm through, throughout the run. And, um, you know, he, he settled lovely and, and was able to show his class late. What do you do with him now? Uh, look, uh, without speaking to James, uh, I think that's enough for him in this preparation. Um, wanted to obviously get to the slipper, and I think that was going to be the end of it for him. But he's done enough this campaign, focus on, you know, the, the sharp races for those early early three-year-olds. You know, I think I could see him developing into a into a lovely Coolmore horse. He's, he's very raw, and he's had a couple of unlucky runs and still 
still doing a little bit wrong. And I'd, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit worried about how worked he got up, worked up he got before the start. But he's been up a long time. He was obviously primed to run in a slipper and then missed out on that day. So um, great effort by Adrian and Gay to, to get him here today. And that tick over trial, you know, that 1200 back to 1100 on this heavy deck, I think proved the winning move. Asherella was on star. Yeah, look, he's a lovely dog. I think um, just a few signs he made sort of had enough his prep, but um, John will sort that. He's a lovely horse. Tim Clark. Uh, yeah. Hallett? Yeah, she, she ran quite well. I um, feel that she's going to make a nice filly next time through. Damien Lane, an extreme diva? She tried hard. Um, she just struggled in the run-in to um, yeah, finish any closer. Dylan Gibbons, Trafalgar Square? Yeah, she'll be a nice filly in time. Ground just told late. Rachel King, he's too darn hot. Uh, Travel well, but didn't handle the heavy. Now to the chairman's quality and a lead up to the Sydney Cup. This horse has put himself in the frame well and truly. He's price firmed up to about third favourite. He may get shorter. Circle of fire for Kieran Ma. Yeah, he's a real prospect. Mm. Um, I loved his first up run um, in, a, uh, in Sydney at Rose Hill and he backed it up. He just learned a little bit from that. Uh, he's definitely not the finished article, no. this horse. It's only, he's had less than 10 starts. Yeah, oh, I thought the same thing, Ryan. It was a really good ride by Dylan Gibbons because when the pressure went into the race at around about the 600 metre mark, although he was wide, Dylan didn't panic. He let him go through his gears and build to his top gradually. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree. I don't think he's anywhere near his ceiling yet. Yeah, he wants to fight and rip and tear early. Mm. And, and for a young horse like this, like he's a four-year-old, um, uh, our time, yeah. so he, uh, I think it's all upside. He it's needs to really learn to get really that tongue in. Look, his... I'm not. So, I think he can. He's got a good chance in the Sydney Cup, mm. but I think as far as the, uh, he's got a bigger future than what we may think. Look, I don't think these were any good, mm. honestly, but for him to do what he did, wide over racing, a second up, 2600 wet track, a very promising stayer. Just look at that shot there, just half and back to the track. Does that look like a track that's had 228 <laughs> no. mils of rain on it? No. 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 Uh, let's go and hear from Kieran Ma, Dylan Gibbons and the other jocks. Lovely win, Kieran. That should top him off for the Sydney Cup in seven days. Well, he looked a bit fresh, didn't he? So uh, <laughs> hopefully that's just what he needed. But no, nah, super job by the team. Uh, Will Bourne, he picked this horse out overseas and um, some great clients, uh, long-term stable clients, good mates. Um, I think Dylan won the Sydney Cup last year in Sydney co in similar colours. Um, so, yeah, you know, ho hopefully he pulls up well. It, he looks like he's pulled up pretty good and um, he can roll on to next week. They walked early. Dylan had to really get on his bike. Fair way from home. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, they made it in a, a, a decent staying test. And if you look at his credentials overseas, he, you know, he did, did have pretty good credentials and um, you looked at him before the race, you know, he'd, uh, he presented really well and he hadn't missed any work, he'd, his prep's been pretty smooth. Beautiful sort of horse, what sort of feel did he give you? A strong one? <laughs> no, spot on, he's just a, a monster of an animal, he gives you the best feel in the world and the problem is, is in these staying races they want to go that 12 and a half, 13s and he just wants to go 11 and a half, 12, so... Just getting into a bit of a battle with him, but I was glad I was able to hang on to him as long as I could. And from the half mile, you know, I just had to sort of work with him with that light weight, and he was very tough late. You're fastly becoming one of those jockeys who um, seems to be always successful over the longer distances. Yeah, I know. It's not a bad thing. There's, there's one in uh, November that I wouldn't mind winning as well, so everyone just keep what Corey said in mind, please. Best of luck, mate. Thank you. Jason Collett, hopeful? Yeah, great run. Probably sitting duck. Rachel King, so dazzling. Uh, really good run. She appreciated the trip and the track. Rhys Jones, Stockman. Uh, couldn't help but be a little bit disappointed with him today, back on his preferred footing, but just doesn't have that same kind of turn of foot and kept on just backing away. Mark Zara, Loft. He uh, just battled today. Ronnie Stewart, Zagalo. Yeah, he jumped well, put himself into the race, very well paced. Um, just advised maybe ride him a little bit closer, so it only picked up from the half mile and just maintained. Cheers, guys. Declan Bates, Fernambulist. Yeah, he's run well. Got a little bit out sprinted when they quickened, but he, he kept finding the line well, so uh, good run. Jamie Carr, Verona. Yeah, she was really disappointing. Um, I thought she was right and finished and stopped badly late. Marzabit, Craig Crow. Uh, just pulled too hard in the run, never relaxed today and overdid it. Well, after Michael Freed, Freeman waded back to the uh, stables and then uh, home for a shower, his day started off very well because Duke Cash gave uh, Michael a great start 
when he won the Carbine Club Stakes. 18 runners lined up in this mile. He just was well presented in the right race and got the right ride. He'd been around the mark. They, they had a crack at 2000. I don't think it worked. And so a nice little freshen and a, a well-planned win from a horse that's always shown he probably should have a better record than what he's got. Yeah. He's, he's found trouble and he's run into some really solid races yeah. throughout his career. He's been a little bit frustrating, hasn't he, on his last sort of three runs. I know he kicked off with a win first up this preparation, but he's just been a touch frustrating. But like you said, he just got the absolute dream run just back in behind him. Blake Shin's riding in terrific form at the moment. It's good. He is, yeah. Uh, Tannhauser was good. He might be a, maybe something you know, like a pack of plate uh, for Tannhauser. Uh, Kintyre is just so genuine and honest. He just never runs bad. I think the force to follow for the day there is that th the filly that run fourth, ex Kiwi, up in class, Firestorm. She could be your Brisbane filly. Uh, little stakes races up there. She'll just pick away. So I think she's on the up. I think she did a really good job stepping up from, you know, a Kensington track to a, a race like that. And um, I think she'll improve again. Uh, let's hear from Michael and Blake Shin. Great, great uh, thriller, great bunch of people involved and um, he's been a horse that's been all around the, the, the better colts or the better three-year-olds so um, coming back to the mile today from the 2000 of the Rose Hill Guineas and thanks to Tommy Berry too, he galloped him for me on Tuesday and took the blinkers off on his recommendation so probably owe him one there. Yeah, well hopefully it's onwards and upwards now for this horse. Yeah, look he's... He, right from day one, he's always given me a good, a, a good impression, um, and he's probably been a little bit frustrating at times, and probably hampered by a few bad barriers. But um, he's definitely got his fair share of ability. Blake, he's been a little bit frustrating this time round, but you got the best out of him today. Yes, look, he's um, interesting horse. He's a bit of a thinker. Um, Michael said Tommy Berry galloped him Tuesday morning, and elected to pull the blinkers off him and who knows that could have been the the, the winning move he uh you know he's a colt um he's back significantly in grade today that was a big key to get him over the line but still he had to apply himself and that's what he did and you know full credit to michael and the team zach pert and tannhauser yeah it was a really good run if he had to draw on a gate and been in a better spot he probably wins but just had to go back from where we were and he finished it off strong jamie carr kintail yeah, he ran well he got through the ground just didn't love it firestorm craig williams yeah, she competed really well, her second race start in Australia, and encouraged him to go up in distance with her. Mikhail, Tommy Berry. Yeah, a really good run by him. He's a horse that's really best off suited at Queensland in the Winter Carnival, but a mile on that wet track just saw him out a little bit late. Sam Clippen and Lee Von Pier. I thought he ran really well. He's just um, a bit suspect, suspect at, at the mile, particularly on the testing ground. Damien Lane, Cafe Millennium. He ran well. Unfortunately, no luck. He was stuck on the inside, didn't get through when I needed to, and... Um, yeah, he just should run closer. Mick D. Zondi. Uh, yeah, stuck on OK. Not a bad effort. Tim Clark, Gold Bullion. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of luck from that draw, but he, he's going to appreciate 2,000. Jacob's time, Rachel King. Uh, it was a good run. He had to just go back a bit to find a bit of cover, but finished off well. Regan Bayless, The Years. I think he may be better on top of the ground. Dylan Gibbons, a G doc Yeah, very good run. Just probably needed it second up. Jason Collett, Pasima. Blocked for a run early in the straight, but just probably wasn't going good enough, though. Chad Schofield, hi Dandy. He struggled. East McDonald at wits. He just found the ground too hard. Zach Lloyd Ma'ali. Uh, probably just looking for something a bit easier. Josh Parr, ground rush. It didn't begin, and that was the end of his chance. Yeah, I think James McDonald, man, that wasn't a hard track there, no. so he just found it hard. Found it hard to get he through. It hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Roddy Out, still to come. Adrian Knox and PJ Bell, and uh, then we'll head west. Uh, Amelia's Jewel wasn't the biggest story over there. 228 mils of purple rain fell yesterday before that meeting. Now let's go to the uh, fourth, the Adrian Knox, a lead up to the Oaks. John O'Shane, two minds whether to go. Probably not two minds. I think he's uh, going to miss it yeah. and look to something else because he has that obstacle, which he brings up in the post-race interview. You're staring at Orchestral and Zardozzi and others, but... She's a staying filly with promise, good banter. Yep, you can't do anything more than she's done. She, the Kembla race has stacked up OK. Obviously, Tudor Levita's come out and run well out of that and one or two others. And, and she arguably was the best runner in the race, and she proved that, putting two together here. A nice well-timed ride by Jamie, who's uh, got her eye in riding timing-wise yeah. at the moment. There's no doubts in the wide, wide world about that. So, Autumn Angel, another one first up. That's all it was, first up, big weight. 
good filly. Don't know if she backs up next week. Um, we'll leave that to Moody to sort out. And and then your typical. This is the race for the typical. We think they can stay. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, they were show at the stumps the week before. It's worked before for a lot of horses. Uh, a few didn't. It didn't work for. Um, but it has for the winner. And maybe the third horse and the second horse. Well, we know she's got class and gets a big weight pull if she backs up. So John O'Shea and uh, Jamie Carr. Well done, John. Um, staying fillies, they can emerge from nowhere, can't they? Uh, we've always thought really highly of her, you know, from her first trial as a two-year-old James Roder and, you know, gave her an enormous rap. And uh, I thought most of the Tavistock fillies aren't inclined to stay, but this one, given every indication at her last run that she's going to get a nice trip. And um, the 53 and got Jamie to ride, it was, you know, a special day. And, you know, she she was supposed to ride second or so. Thank God we got her, because um, she rode her beautifully. And just the pull on the weights was always going to be important for us late. You're looking forward to taking on Orchestral and Zardozzi next week? No, I don't know if I will. You know, I think that... She's a beautiful filly, she's got a very bright future, but she doesn't need to butt heads with their season champion fillies, you know, and, and if we just take our time, we might end up in Queensland at a lesser, but a, albeit a group one, you know, up there, and um, I think the key for her was uh, getting a toe in the ground today, we might even come back and run in a Frank Packer, but we'll discuss that with the owners, and if they said they wanted to run, well obviously she's a filly in good form, and we'd give her an opportunity. Congratulations, Jamie. What a win. She was super. She really surprised me, actually. Like we, we had a nice enough run. Um, then when Autumn Angel kicked, I thought, shit, we're going to run a nice uh, second here. And obviously the weight swing helped, but um, she was super. And she was going away late as well. Did she feel like she had enough? Because I just heard John saying he probably won't push on this preparation. After him, he's the boss. Um, but she pulled up with a real level head. Um, if he wanted to push on, I'd push on. If not, he's the boss. Right and well. Thank you. Thank you. Autumn Angel, Mark Zara. Uh, look, she's run out of her skin. Just um, the weight pulls made a difference in the end. Cello, Jason Collett. Yeah, ran great. Uh, don't know if she was really that good in the ground. Zach Lloyd, Kenyatta. Yeah, she ran fantastic. Um, very progressive filly. I think she'll be quite good in the future. Regan Bayless, kind words. Super run. Private Legacy, Rachel King. Uh, massive run. She had to get a long way back from the gate, but got home really well. Jay Ford, Bush Girl. Yeah, she quitted herself. She was way up in class, but she did all right. Ah, uh, Hariri, Craig Williams. Yeah, the barrel's a big negative for her today, but the way that she closed off once she got clear was full of merit. Zach Purton, Brightford. Logged in a nice spot, travelled really well, but when I asked to let her down, that she just didn't respond. Heaven bound, Lake Shin. Look, she she ran a credible race for something a little bit easier. Waikato girl, Tommy. Didn't handle the ground. Reese Jones, Harlow missed. I uh, just had to do it tough today from the draw. Um, yeah, I was entitled to drop out. Michael D, Hippie Dreams. Uh, you probably would have liked her to have seen her quicken up a bit better, but she stuck on OK. Dylan Gibbons, last straw. Yeah, just a forgive run. Just got caught muddled up and didn't really sprint home. Ronnie Stewart, Heaven uh, Noble Tess. Uh, Travelled nice, but probably just not up to the class. Andy Atkins, Ocean Diva. Had a wide run, probably a bit out of a grade. And, um, might be able to look, looking for a little spell. Rightio, uh, that is the Adrian Knox. Now let's go to the PJ Bill, the last on the program. Race number 10 of the day, and it was taken out by Gerald Ryan Sterling, Alexia Train, Facile. Well, she just found the perfect race for herself. She didn't jump cleanly at a previous stop. The Gerald and Sterling throw a set of blinkers on her. She got back to her old style and absolute got a gifted lead yeah. here for a 1,200 metre race and played right into her hands, that, I would have thought. That's her was, style of race. It was just a give-me for young Tyler Shaw out in front. He had an absolutely great day. But, yeah, they just handed it to him early. They just let him control the race from up front and just kicked. And I think the blinkers were a big help. Considering the way the race was run, she was enormous, um, this second filly, infancy, infancy, and she pulled up with the thumps. So that's an enormous performance from her. French Endeavour needed a faster speed, as did most in that race. As I said, a hard race to read, but uh, the winner capitalised on uh, that natural speed that she's got and finished it right off at 1,200, considering the circumstances. Second and third were great. All right, let's hear from Gerald and... Uh that man again, Tyler Schiller. A lot of satisfaction, trained the mum, trained the father. She's always promised a lot. Some couple of good fillies have beaten her in those races as a two-year-old. Uh, she had the setback with a chip. Um, probably trained her too hard in the spring, trying to make her run 1,400. And then after her first up, her uh, second run here when she um, missed the start and she was 
not out to see happy. I said to the crew, we're just freshening up and aiming at this race and whack the blinkers on and see how we go. She skipped away and she was going to take some running down. Yeah, well, Tyler was confident. He came out Tuesday week ago and rode her and a jump out and rode the other two fillies. We had the three fillies in it in work and I gave him his pick and he, he, he picked her 10 days ago. So um, we're happy with it. Well done, Tyler. That just tops off a great day, mate. Yeah, it makes a good day even better. And um, good to win on her last start. She was a little bit tardy away. She's a bit of a temperamental mare. And to get a group win on the board for her, I think it's a big, big credit for her. Um, the team's done well with her, Gerald and Sterling's team. And um, I thought she gave a really good kick up the rise. And I was surprised that one actually got that close to her, but um, she was strong through the line. It's easy when they leave you alone like that. Yeah, for sure. I felt like I got it pretty comfortably. And she travelled up underneath me really well. So for her to quicken like that, um, Got Dylan on the post. Dylan's Givens infancy. Yeah, fantastic run. She's just in a rich vein of form in the minute and full credit to the team. French Endeavour, Jason Collett. Uh, great run. Yeah, she attacked the line well and sits up nicely for a couple of weeks. Commemorative, Jamie Carr. Yeah, she actually ran really well. She just pulled too hard, especially on a track like this today. Tom Berry, August Bloom. She's come back in good order, 1400 in a couple of weeks. She'll be spot on. Blake Shin, Chris Dilley. Uh, look, she ran okay. I'd forgive her. She's overdoing it a bit. Get her into a fast run race, off speed, she'll return to form. Jordan Childs, Mira Valrose. Uh, she just couldn't accelerate in that wet ground, so she'll be back on, back better on, better, on better ground. Rachel King, unique ambition. Uh, it was a good effort, probably 1,200 is just a little bit sharp for her in this grade. Luke Curry, Ithamus. Yeah, she's just wide from the draw and um, weak and late. Tim Clark, Pajani. Uh, she just found the back in distance up in grade a bit, a bit too much for her. Zach Lloyd, count your blessings. Uh, I thought she carried herself well on this grade. Adam Hieronymus, Platinum Jubilee. Yeah, just slow out, far too aggressive through the run, and that was the end result. OK, we're just trying to work out. Have you got the message back yet? No, you he might be up. back yet. We're trying to find out what was on the menu uh, with Mr Ho last night mm. for Oscar Schiller. <laughs> um, yeah. There was plenty of talk about the two-piece, or the three-piece fee, but um, I think it would have been a little bit better than yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> OK, we'll come back. Uh, more to come to wrap things up after this. Stay with us. Church is almost finished for Sunday morning. Uh, now, uh, you've Tyler's been back in touch. Yeah, we've confirmed with Tyler. He went out last night and had a big pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> Not like chicken, but it's yeah. close to white meat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pork chop. Uh, right, now, let's, before we show this rate, what a remarkable effort by the Parnham family yesterday at Ascot Racecourse. They almost rode the program. Uh, race one, trained by Neville, ridden by Stephen. Race two, ridden by Brad Parnham. Race three, race one by Chris Parnham, ridden, uh, trained by um, Damien Lane's father, Michael. Uh, Chris Parnham trained, uh, rode the fourth winner for Dad Neville. Race five, Chris Parnham, again, rode the winner. Race six, Chris Parnham, rode the winner. Race seven, Stephen Parnham, rode the winner. They didn't win race eight. Race nine, the last, Chris Parnham again. Oh. The family almost trained so and rode the card. How many did Chris have? Oh, hang on. Right. Four, hang eight. on. <laughs> One, two, three, yeah. four, five, five. Five. Oh, he kept the Good family. Effort. Five. Oh, well, sorry, there's enough of them. <laughs> yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. job, you know. That's right. <laughs> They're going to ride with us. <laughs> the only race they didn't win was won by Pike. <laughs> Willie Pike, who's back from an injury. Let's pick them up around the turn. This is uh, the comeback race of Amelia's Jewel in the Roma Cup, but it was Oscar's Fortune who was too good. Angela straight for home. It leads by two Oscar's Fortune. 
Jade coming around its heels. Three lengths away then is Amelia's Jewel. She's being tested as Oscar's Fortune hits the front. Oscar's Fortune clear. Amelia's Jewel trying valiantly. Oscar's Fortune in front of Amelia's Jewel. And Oscar's Fortune has upset the favourite. Oscar's Fortune beat Amelia's Jewel. Ripcord Jemison photoed third from Triple Missile Hot Z. Acromantula. That, of and course, is, is the horse, Oscar's Fortune, who's ran second to overpass in the winter bottom. Yeah. Uh, a very, very talented three-year-old. Uh, heads to the quokka, as does Amelia's Jewel. So it's shaping up as a, a great second edition of that race. Yep, two weeks' time, they promote it well, and it was a huge success last year. Yeah. Day two of the championships. Let's go through these races uh, one by one, starting with the Queen Elizabeth. Via Sestina is the favourite at $2.10. Uh, confirmation, Pride of Jenny's coming, Cascadian's coming. Mr Brightside will press on, so this is something to look forward to. Yeah, we'll wait for decisions on Militarise. Um, Riff Rocket probably, I don't know. Not. No. Um, interesting, Plax the Carousel I think is pretty good in her own right. So that's always, that's a, that's a, yeah. Yeah, she's going to take some beating, uh, but she's got, a, she's got competition, no doubt. Here is the uh, the Sydney Cup. Uh, Chris Waller has the favourite here, more felons. Circle of Fire firmed into $6 off the back of uh, yesterday. Uh, we're assuming post-impressionists are still pressing on. Yeah, we haven't heard anything there. I'm sure we'll hear something in the next couple of days. Um, yeah, I'm just lacking a star. Obviously, it's hard. Uh, he's shaping up well, I think. The, you know, those two, more felons and Circle of Fire, personally. Could uh, this overshadow the Queen Elizabeth, the Oaks, with orchestral Enzardozzi in a rematch? Uh, well, that's that's giving uh, disrespect to Tuta La Vida when you call yeah. it a rematch because mm. Tuta La Vida finished in front of Zardozzi. But 2,400 metres, different pain level. Autumn Angel on the backup. Quintessa comes into the race. Is this the race of the day? Uh, maybe, yeah. It's, it's, it's quality in numbers this year. Usually, mm. if there's one standout filly with a bit of class, they, you know, we still might have a standout filly with a bit of class, but there's a bit of quality there amongst the dangers there. You look down there, there's some group winners, group one and group two winners amongst them as well. So good, a very good Oaks. Just quickly, Zardozzi, if the rain hadn't have come yesterday in the track, like we thought it was going to be like a really heavy 10, would she have run yesterday in the derby? Well, Everyone was saying the, uh, the wet was her edge yesterday. They probably didn't want to run on a heavy 10. Mm. If I think they were, in retrospect, looking at that race... Um, Knowing it was eight by... Yeah, a heavy eight by heavy the eight time. Not yeah. bottomless, and maybe that was always in the back of the mind if we run in the derby. We still want to, might give her an opportunity to back up in an Oaks, but yeah. we, we don't want to hurt her too much in the derby yeah. at the same time. Mm. So, anyway, they, they've made their decision, yeah, and she's here to run well. Uh, Queen of the Turf, another Group 1 win. Now, there's a scratch from the Doncaster, but I'm... I'm sure this was always in the back of Chris Waller's mind as a, yeah. as, a, as a real grand final for a gotcha. Yeah, it's a good race. It's always a good race. He's got one, two, three in betting. Campionessa comes to town. Yep, and maybe Tropical Squall held back for this. Yes. And if we get a wet track, Ruthless James, well, Ruthless James ready for a peak performance. So Kieran Ma strong there as well. Uh, the Arrowfield, the three-year-old sprint. Have a look at this race. Yes, uh, how do we treat osmosis there? Um, it's going to be a very even field. I think we'll have to do some more form on that one. Great lineup in the Arrow field. Percy Sykes now attracts the Golden Slipper winner. Uh, and it's not often the golden, a gold slipper winning filly will go to the Percy Sykes. They go, if they go, they go to the sires yeah. or, or go for a spell. So yeah. here she is, scratched out of the sires to run in the Percy Sykes. Yeah, uh, it'll floor a few punters because a lot of punters just snip around in this race, backing the improvers at big yeah. odds in the all-in markets, and you don't expect to see the golden slipper winner. <laughs> <laughs> and Manal, obviously, they'll think about the champagne. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, the Provincial Midway. So we've got our field now, and Tavi Time beaten en route to this race, $3.20. Territory Express has been super, so a Shadows of Love. Straight Acer gets into the field. Strong. This is yeah. probably the best no, depth we've by, had. Uh, by far. No, it's a real race. There, these are a couple of potential group or already group performers there. So look, that's a great race. And here is the meeting in its entirety. $5 million Queen Elizabeth. The Sydney Cup, the Oaks, the Queen of the Turf, the Arrowfield, the Percy Sykes, they make up the, the bulk of the championships, Provincial Midway. Then you've got the Sapphire, the South Pacific and the Fernhill. 
So two-year-olds going to a mile. The following week, of course, the all-aged and the champagne steak. So that was a remarkable day at Royal Randwick. That was. It was a great day's racing, and we had a couple more to come. Yep. Yeah. Guess what? Can't the wait. forecast is great for this week. <laughs> well, there's no excuse to call any meat not meat. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's raining on the day. On the day. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend as we gear up for day two of the championships.